Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. That is just a fact of life. Hello, welcome back to another Impact Lounge Impact Review. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. How are you doing today, Ro? I'm doing great, Adam. How about yourself? Yeah, really good, really good. Uh, I'm actually feeling a lot better than I was last week because we recorded this early in the morning. You've got the graveyard, well, not the graveyard shift, the early shift this morning uh, at your end. But uh, yeah, quite a few times now I've had some people say that I've been down on uh, on Impact. And don't worry, I, I love the feedback, love the feedback. But I actually can't remember being that negative about it. I'm going to have to go back and listen to last week's show. But uh, uh, generally, I, I think Impact's doing brilliantly at the moment. So if I do come across as negative listeners, I really am sorry because I do love what Impact is doing at the moment. Anyway, um, enough about last week's show. Welcome to the review. If this is your first time stopping by, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, or if you're on one of uh, things like Podbean or uh, Apple Music or whatever it may be, then make sure you like it, drop us a, a comment or whatever it may be, but give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, doesn't really matter. All feedback is good feedback and it helps us with the ratings and we really do want to stay the number one place for impact news. So um, for first time listeners, what we do is we do... You know, uh, a trivia question each week. We also answer your questions, and, and when time comes into it, we also do a bit of uh, weekly news as well as this week's review. So, before we dive into the show, let's cover off some of those things. So, first, first things first. Let's go for the trivia question. So, I first of all, uh, the the question that I had was to do with Rebel last week, and I asked what was the stable that she debuted in. And who was the um, person who wore a mask in that stable? And I can tell you that the answer was indeed the menagerie. And Rob Terry was under the mask. So congratulations to Jamie Wiesner. Wiesner, I'm not sure how you say it. Well done. But there was quite a few. Kelvin Briggs, Willow Rush. There's quite a few in there who who all got the right answer. So obviously it was a lot easier than, than I suspected. Uh, did you know this one? Bro? Yes, I did. The moment that you... Uh, gave all the uh, clues there, there was a there was a match where the freak was i think it was a tag match i think it was crazy steve and the freak against someone and uh, he threw someone out of the ring i don't know if you remember this and for a split second the camera angle showed that he accidentally ripped the mask off as he was thrown out of the ring and rob terry was stood there without a mask on and then all the other camera angles you know they they kind of cut away from it sharpish and this is before uh, I, don't, I don't know if he was ever actually revealed as the freak but yeah the, uh, i don't know if you remember seeing this when it aired well you know the thing that gave it away is because you remember him when he was with the british invasion and just his body type and i think what the thing that they didn't do when they put him in the menagerie is they still had his uh you know his chest you know his upper body part exposed and then you know he wore tights and it, you know it was the same thing from when he was with the british invasion so i mean you could recognize from the body the pose and everything well, I'm going to introduce a, another semi-regular feature here now, which is Adam's unpopular opinion. But I actually really liked the Menagerie. <laughs> I thought the storyline was good. I, I thought Nux was brilliant in it. And, uh, you know, when you think back to it, all four members in there had something to offer for different reasons. It's just a shame that they didn't really go with it. I, I don't know why it never really took on. And, and from memory, this was the last time that they really pushed out the boat on kind of entrance music and entrance theme, you know, with the you know, the kind of inflatables at the side and those kind of things. Did, do you remember much about them or did you have an opinion on them? Yeah, I, I remember them. I think my opinion about them is, and we've seen this in, in uh, his, the history of wrestling, when you're introducing a new wrestling stable, I think it serves better when you have like new wrestlers, if I might say, versus the menagerie. It, you know, the really, the two new people that we got were Rebel and crazy steve and you know surprisingly those were the two ones that you know really kind of got some sort of a push you know nux you know he's been around the wrestling world and then R rob terry you know the freak you know we had known him you know prior to the british invasion so i mean that was just my only takeaway i was, I was gonna say actually that um I thought they did the debut really, really well. And it was almost like that was the genesis of 
the kind of style that the impact or TNA as it was back then adapted, you know, the, the, the vignettes, the backstage segments, you know, where he was talking about going back to his hometown and uh, his father's business was crumbling and those kind of things. And he had to get the gang back together to get money. Uh, and it was actually really well done. And, 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 you know, you see that kind of stuff now with, you know, uh, America's top team, you know, that kind of same style. So for me, it, it was a real departure at the time. And I really liked it. And Nux's acting was, was really good um, for the most part. And for a big guy as well, he could move. There, there was a match. I can't remember if it was an explosion match or um, I, I think it might have been on the main show. But he wrestled someone. I've, I've got a feeling it might have been Austin Aries. Uh, and he was doing like little kip ups and you know, handstands and things like that. He was he was surprisingly agile for a big man. But there you go. Uh, another one who, who went by the wayside. So that was last week's uh, question. So, Ro, you've got one first this week. And you're going to surprise me with this because you haven't asked me yet. So I'm going to try and guess along with the viewers as well. All right, right, will do. Okay, a question for this week. Or trivia for this week, I should say. All right, here's the three clues. Obviously, who am I? The first one. My arrival in then TNA consisted of me part of a group with a former world champion as well as the son of a Hall of Famer. Second clue, I have something in common with The Undertaker, Kane, and Mankind. And then finally, my former partner also wrestles in now Impact Wrestling. Who am I? Okay, um, I was going to say I think I've got it, um, but I, I, well, I'll tell you off air. We won't spoil it for the listeners. So if you know the answer, make sure to leave it in the comments section below. And if you are listening on another device, please do check us out on YouTube because this is generally where we get the questions from. Although you can get us on Twitter as well. So if you want us to answer a question, get us on Twitter. I'm at V2. That's the letter followed by the number V2 Wrestling Show. And row is rt great underscore rt great underscore there you go so checks out on twitter as well and that's going to lead me on to something in a second because uh i am going to be going to the british tapings uh, that they're doing in september and there was some news from that which i'm going to go on to in a second but before we do that we do ask for you to drop your questions to us as well now last week must have been a slow news week or something, but there weren't any questions left for us, which is a shame, but don't worry. You can all come back stronger this week and come up some crackers. But I believe, Ro, you've got some questions you want to ask both me and our listeners. Yes. All right. My first one um, I wanted to ask you as well as the listeners, your, your thought. I know a lot of times we always get who we like to see. And I know in the past, you know, you yourself have mentioned certain people you like to come come back to the company. I had seen on, I said, some news site where James Storm, he had put out a tweet, you know, asking fans, what promotion would you like to see for him to uh, perform in? And I want to ask you, how would you feel about him coming back? And before you answer, I just want to share, he's probably the only person that departed the company that I would welcome. Because I just feel like he'd be, you, you'd be able to thrust him in. You could thrust him right, right into the main event. And I think he'd be able to blend in well with some of the talents that the company has right now. 100% agree. Uh, to me, James Storm, obviously an original. And it kind of left a bitter, bitter taste in my mouth the way he left last time. And I don't think he's, maybe he's a little bitter as well. But I don't think that the company has treated him that bad over the years, you know. And he went out in a, a loser leaves town match against, uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, Dan, 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 America's top team. Can't think of his name. Dan Lambert? Yes. Dan Lambert. Uh, in a loser leaves town match, which obviously heavily, you know, interference, those kind of things. So, you know, I could see him coming back and, and I think he would be a great addition. I mean, he, I, I, on his twitter feed i think he was saying that he's in the best shape he's ever been he's he's basically spent the last six months doing a few dates here and there but basically getting into shape so you know he's an older guy he's someone who criminally should have had a long title run in tna or impact uh, as it became and so yeah i'd love to see him back and is there anyone else well other than tito ortiz and and uh, no i don't think there's anyone else i'd like to see back but, but to be fair i always like matt morgan and I know he came back last year and it was pretty hopeless. But 
I always thought that he could have been another guy. He could have been a top guy, but they've got someone like Killer Cross now who's very similar in, in some ways to Matt Morgan. So, um, yeah, James Storm, you're quite right, could go straight back in at the top of the card. And I think that it would get a huge pop as well. I think if they wanted to do something like that, uh, they could quite easily bring him in. And if they did, I tell you who I'd uh, actually, I'll throw the question back at you. Who would you like to see him feud against if he came back in? H- how would you book his his return? I think if you have Austin Aries run through everyone, I'd have him face Austin Aries. I think that itself right there where, you know, he's Austin Aries is the current guy. You got this old uh, TNA legend who, you know, wants that one one shot of glory again. And, there, you know, that, that writes itself right there. You see, for me, I'd bring him in against Brian Cage. Uh, because Brian Cage obviously got his undefeated streak going, although he's had a count-out loss. But um, remember, James Storm came back and took Crimson's undefeated streak. So, he could, you know, Brian Cage could come out and say, you know, I've been undefeated, no one can beat me. And then Storm could come out and say, last guy who said that, I beat him in 30 seconds. <laughs> so, 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 you know, that, that's where I'd go with it. Although, I don't know if I'd like to see James Storm with the X Division title, but there you go. Anyway, just an idea. Anyway, listeners, let us know. Would you like to see Storm back? Uh, uh, please leave some comments below. And then my, my second one was on this past uh, teleconference with uh, Tessa Blanchard, a question was brought up uh, about intergender wrestling. And Tessa talked about her high praise for it and how she would like to see it in Impact Wrestling. And my question to you as well as the listeners is, would you like to see intergender wrestling in Impact Wrestling? For me, before I get get your take, I'm not a fan of it. Like I understand people who are into it and I respect it, but I just, you know, I've seen it a couple of times. I just can't get into it. And I feel I wouldn't want to see it in Impact Wrestling and I can't see Impact doing it. I can't really see any of the major promotions doing it just because the the PR side of it. I, I, I kind of feel like if something goes wrong, we know things in wrestling can go wrong. I don't think it would sit well. I mean, you see nowadays and I think of somebody like a Seth Rollins, for example, where he's got the reputation of injuring people. And we know in wrestling things happen. Now, you imagine that happening in an intergender match. I mean, and maybe it's just me looking too much into it. That's why I said I want your take on it. I just can't see it getting over well or being received well by the uh, sponsors on uh, for any of these uh, big companies. Sponsor-wise, I, I don't think that's really an issue. You know, certainly, you know, with the ratings being what they were this week, I think sponsor-wise, it doesn't really make much difference what impact do. And if you think about you know, what they're doing with Scarlet Bordeaux, you know, bringing Sexy back and let's see how far they push that. I don't think that they're really bothered about controversy. So I, I don't think that's the reason why they wouldn't do it if they don't do it. Would I like to see it? I'm neither here nor there. You know, I, I've always said that one of my favorite matches, not because it was a technical masterclass or anything like that, was um, China versus Jeff Jarrett uh, for the Intercontinental Championship in a, in a good housekeeping match, mainly because it was so russo it was meta russo also almost so you know i I like things like that but i don't know i could i could see tessa blanchard pulling it off you know i can't imagine uh alicia edwards in an intergender match but tessa she most probably could hold her own i I believe she had an excellent match with brian cage recently on another show but um would i like to see it does it have a place i don't know maybe if tessa you know runs through the roster eventually and there's no one else to beat maybe she could go for it but uh, we'll see it, it's uh, oh sorry go ahead finish no, no no that was me that was me finished yeah carry on okay no my last thing is see with the with china when i remember when they had it with china when they did it with china held china held the intercontinental title it worked because i think you were able to buy in she was as big as a lot of the dudes and i think just for me a lot of the times when I see some of these women, and I'm looking at more in just stature and weight class. I mean, if you were have, pitting them against cruiserweights, like I remember uh, Jacqueline, I think she uh, was wrestling the cruiserweight division at one point, and even uh, Hall of Famer Medusa. I think, I think for me, just from my lens, if they're around the same size, it's easy for me to buy in. That Tessa-Brian Cage match, 
and the thing you know it, it was it was it was nicely done but i think what it kind of gave away is we see brian cage running through guys the same size as tessa they don't stand a shot but all of a sudden tessa's you know lifting you know brian cage up with ease it, it just i think just some of those things if if you were to pit like in my last take on it is say if you had brian cage versus like awesome kong i think i can believe that because awesome kong's big Brian Cage is big, but I think to have such a smaller wrestler, it's no different than when you have, you know, Rey Mysterio versus Big Show. You know, we don't expect Rey Mysterio to be able to suplex Big Show. It's more of kind of uh, designed to be like an underdog uh, type role. So I just think that's for me where I'm just kind of like, eh. I mean, if Impact were to do it, I mean, it's not going to make me stop watching or anything, but I'm just not a fan of it. For those who are, hey, hats off to you. I know wrestling's evolving as a whole. But that's just one thing that I can't get behind. I think the, the problem with it is if you did go in on it, you know, with someone like Tessa Blanchard, how do you then move her back into the knockouts division? It's very hard if she's competing with men then to suddenly go back to the knockouts. So uh, that's a reason why I wouldn't like to see it. But, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. And, you know, the way that, that Don and Scott are, are booking impact, you know, to be a bit more headline grabbing and those kind of things, I go possibly you know we might see it somewhere down the line anyway um that's it for for the questions but i, I have got well i was going to say a bit of news they they announced this week some of the matches for the uk show in september and i just really wanted to touch on this to see if you knew anything about the guys who you know have have been named for some of the matches now as someone who who lives in the uk and i don't follow uk wrestling that much but you know i have seen you know uh, some of it over the years you know the matches that they've announced have been fantastic and i would really say if you live in the uk and you get a chance to go along you know this is going to be an absolutely stacked card it's you know so it's just remember now it's it's some sunday september the 9th uh wrestling media comp 2018 in manchester so uh do check out those tickets and no i'm not on commission uh, for selling these, you know, I genuinely believe it's going to be a great event, and and you can, I'm guessing you're going to be able to meet all your favourite wrestling characters, namely me there as well, if you want. Um, so yeah, so if you tune into my Twitter, I'll be posting pictures. But the matches that they've just announced are LAX are putting their tag team titles on the line against Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm. Now I'm not expecting you to know much about these guys, row, but I remember when British wrestling was kind of starting to come out of the old bingo hall type um, wrestling. And and that has a very different connotation over here in the UK. It was very much more of a pantomime uh, before, you know, they started to adapt the American wrestling style. And and Jody Fleisch was one of these first high-flying guys in the British scene who started to do that. And I'm sure I'm going to get some of our listeners going to come back and correct me and say, oh, no, you had X and Y and Z, you know, who were before him. But certainly for me, on satellite TV or cable TV, you know, that this is the guy who, who really kind of revolutionized British wrestling in, in the UK, uh, Jody Fleisch. And, uh, you know, and he must be getting on some time now because we're talking 15, 20 years on, and uh, he was incredible back then. So I think these guys are going to be great. Uh, do you know them at all? No, um, I do not. Yeah. So anyway, they, they've held titles all over the world, but they've never, as far as I know, I don't think they've ever appeared on American TV, certainly not in WWE or anything like that. Um, and next up, we have Sammy Callahan taking on Jimmy Havoc. And I think this is a match that a lot of people were talking about last year. They wanted to see on Impact because Jimmy Havoc, um, I want to say he is the boyfriend of someone else. Um, I think it was during the Bram storyline with Rosemary. The ex, uh, the ex-boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that at that time they were talking about they wanted to see uh, Jimmy Havoc, and I think he did appear, didn't he? But it never really went anywhere. So so this is another one which, you know, Sammy Callahan, everything he touches at the moment is, is, is great. So, yeah, looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that right there in itself, I know that's going to be a big deal. And then it, Eli Drake is facing someone too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Eli Drake, Moose, Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, and Sue Young. Uh, well, they haven't actually announced who they're facing. Well, well, not that I've seen anyway, but they're certainly going to be on the show. So it's uh, Eli, Moose, Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, and Sue Young are all down to star as well. Oh, I say star, they'll, they'll also be appearing. So uh, I don't have who they are facing off the top of my head, unfortunately. Anyway, if you want to catch that, you know, just make sure to. Uh, Go along to Impact UK, and I'm sure they'll have details 
on there. And as I said, you know, we're not getting anything for this. We just uh, want to make sure we get a good, lively crowd. But do enter the promo code Adam is greater than Row, and you'll get a 10% discount. <laughs> Only joking, of course. Right. Uh, leave us some comments below if you want us to ask any questions for next week. And also leave us the answer to the trivia question. Right. On to this week's show. I really enjoyed it. And I, I know, as I said at the beginning of the show, that some people think sometimes I'm negative towards it. But I really enjoyed this week's show. There, I can't think of one segment that I didn't enjoy. No, same here. And I think sometimes it's easy to get confused as far as, you know, liking something and just having a little bit of criticism. If we just said everything was great week in and week out, then it I think it doesn't open up the room for discussion because you can watch the whole show and find like, OK, well, maybe they could have done that better. I mean, there was a couple things here, but it doesn't mean that I didn't like it. I mean, if I don't like it, I'll flat out say I didn't like it. But with that said, once again, man. Um, I can't stress it enough. They seem to really find their groove as far as what work it works and what doesn't work outside of the GWN thing. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into it then. Let's break the show down. So we kicked off with obviously, uh, you know, a review of last week's or, or highlight package of the week before. So that was all very good. But the, the show proper kicked off with quite a good brawl backstage between the OGs and LAX. I really quite enjoyed this. Uh, it, it was a bit silly, but uh, yeah, it was good and, you know, builds the feud nicely. I thought what was crazy is when Hernandez gave, it was one of the backstage people that border tossed to the wall and that, that looked painful. <laughs> it was the way he fell down from the wall, then hit the railing on the way down that looked painful. You know, because you can, I suppose, you know, if you're trained to take these moves, which these guys obviously are, you know, that you can most probably prepare for the impact of the wall. But then you think, OK, that's it. And then you suddenly hit yourself on the rail on the way down. But you're right. That was a, that was a cracking move. But it was good, though, wasn't it? I mean, it looked like a proper brawl at times. Yeah. One thing I've noticed as well, you know, I've, we talked about this briefly last week. I kept keep on saying Santana is, is going to be the breakout star. But Ortiz is coming into his own. He, since he's braided his hair, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, since he's put, you know, half cornrows in, he's actually seems to have got a bit more character and a bit more confidence. I, I don't know if you've noticed him maybe come to the fore a bit more within the team. I mean, I could see a scenario just say, and this is looking way, way down the road. Maybe if you had him, you know, the night that Santana wins the world title, you have Ortiz win the X division title and they both embrace. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's good to see that he's getting the opportunity to really showcase what he can do because we all know, you know, eventually they're going to break him up and you just hate to someone see someone be genetted, like you always mention. <laughs> That's right. Right. OK, I'm going I'm to sit down for this one, Ro. Sit down. OK, prepare yourself. I saw a Desi Hit Squad match that I enjoyed. <laughs> I, I really, really enjoyed this opening match that we saw. I know we had the brawl. We moved on to the Desi Hit Squad then. And uh, we had uh, Ishimori and P.T. Williams taking them on. And I actually thought this match was excellent. And, you know, usually the match at the beginning of the card, especially when it's between two teams that are not in the top scene, they were okay. But I thought the wrestling in this was, was, was blinding. I thought it was really good. Possibly even match of the night for my money. Okay, I didn't feel that high on it. It was fine. I was just confused about the result just because, you know, we had mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when they first attacked Taji Ishimori and Petey Williams. We thought nothing was going to come of it because, you know, they're not a team or anything like that. And then we get this match two weeks later and Taji Ishimori and Petey Williams win. So... You know, unless they're going to stay together as a team, I don't understand why you'd have Desi Hit Squad lose here only because it seemed like they were gaining some momentum. So, I mean, I don't think it's something that's going to harm them necessarily. I just kind of just thought it didn't make too much sense for them to lose to a makeshift tag team. Yeah, very true. I, I mean, the result aside, yeah, I, I thought you, you're quite right that it was a strange bit of booking, especially as, you know, you didn't really get any interference from Gamma Singh either. You know, they could have easily have done that, you know, to, to, you know, to get the result their way. Um, just on, on a side note, I really don't like uh, Ishimori's new look. I know we talked about this the other week. It's not so much his ring gear. It's more his haircut and that, well, I don't know is, what he's got on his cheek. It's, it's almost like he, he's painted on a, a face, fake William Shatner side, sideburn. Anyway, it's weird and I, I don't like his, his visual look. But 
once again in the ring they were great so um after that well great finish by the way never get tired of seeing the the canadian destroyer dear yeah i mean it's one of those one of those moves i mean i know nowadays everybody does it but you know it, it harkens me back to prime pd williams when he used to hit that that was just the pop that got everyone off their seats i keep forgetting how old pt williams is because i mean he's been around for for well as long as impact has almost i don't know was was he was he original i can't remember uh, uh he must have been close I, to being one i forgot i mean i remember because when i started watching uh it was a 2004 he might have been an original if i had to guess he's probably in his mid to late 30s but he still flies around that ring and looks amazing so um anyway the also the modified ddt that that uh, ishimori hit for the win was once again a nice move anyway moving on enough praise i, I could i could go on about it. as i said it was for me my favorite match of the night and i think because i had such low expectations of it maybe that's why uh I thought it did well, but storyline wise, yeah, it's interesting to see where we went. And I don't think we saw a backstage segment of uh, Gamut Singh berating them, did we? Did I miss that? Maybe. No, uh, but that he, he only berates them when they win. <laughs> <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Uh, anyway, let's move on. So we had Pentagon Junior cut a promo. Uh, Cero Miedo. I like this. I thought this was good as well. And we said this last week that they should have been doing this while he was champion. And, you know, I, I, I just don't get it. Now, before we move on and talk about this promo, do you think that these guys are going to be leaving for uh, WWE? You know, there was a question from Lee Pullen. Pullen, I just remembered he was mentioning about that. And I told him we'd talk about it. You know, I'm at the point really where I've, you know, I've been this way. I really don't. You know, whoever is in Impact, I enjoy them while they're here because I know a lot of people, you know, that's their goal to get to, you know, the other company. And I understand because they can offer the most money and, you know, you're on a big stage since, you know, they're covered, you know, worldwide and, you know, with ESPN and now they're having the Fox deal and et cetera, et cetera. But I guess my, my thing is if they do, they do. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. But I think it's going to come to a point where them trying to sign everyone kind of like <laughs> I compare it to Ash and Pokemon. Got to catch them all. Got to catch them all. It's going <laughs> to backfire on them because while you you know, you're being compensated well to be, you know, used, whether it's in developmental or not used, period, that's going to bother some people. And, you know, the, the one thing, too, where I always get a crack out of is, you know, the people who do go over there like I had seen. Sienna and um, Madison Rain when they were talking about them competing in the tournament, you know, they just become straight up company people, you know, they drink the Kool-Aid and say all the right things. And it's just, I find it so funny, but my main thing is if they do, they do. I mean, I'm at the point, you know, I don't expect these people to stay forever in impact. I really kind of look at impact as a two to three year kind of, um, I don't even want to say waiting period, but that's where wrestlers go for two to three years. And then after that, they venture out because we seen that we see this with a lot of people. They come on board, you know, they get a good push after year two, year three. They kind of just fade into the background. They don't really have anything for them. And the next thing you know, they sign. So, I mean, if they do, they do. Yeah, I, I, I think they will. I think there was a, a rumor I read that they've canceled all their tapings next. Not their tapings, but their their independent dates next year. They've, they've told the, the the bookers of all these shows out there that they, they're currently on, that they may not be able to fulfill them, which makes me think that they're likely to go. But, you know, I don't think it's going to be a great loss to impact because there's only so much storytelling you can do by backstage pr promos as opposed to stuff in the ring. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're, they're incredible in the ring, but at the same time, you know, I'd, I'd rather have people who you can enjoy and have a storyline with and it's very hard it's all the the, the 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 grunt work has been done by sammy callahan in this feud hasn't it and it was the same with austin aries he did all the grunt work in that feud with, with pentagon as well so you know anyone could be put in that position the only thing that he's got going for him he's got a defined character which is great and he's an amazing wrestler but uh we'll, we'll see yeah and just the last thing i wanted to add too is i think people get confused you know what fans when a lot of times when fans are saying man you know you should come over here it's kind of in you know you remember too 
we used to see this back, you know, I mean, I remember seeing this as a kid where you see guys from WCW or ECW go to, you know, over to the E and they weren't the same character. You know, the one thing with Vince and people forget is if it's not something that he's created, he's not whatever got you over here ain't going to get you over there. A lot of times they strip it down and they want to make you into what they want to make you into. And then nowadays we see where they're not even trying to do that, where they want to take a hottest act and just put them on payroll. Then that's that because they think that's crippling the company. But what makes impact so good is the creative team and the brain trust you know, they're able to plug in and out of people. Now, does it stink, you know, when you get invested in certain wrestlers and then to see them depart and we see storylines end prematurely? Of course, but I mean, it is what it is. What it is. I think the one thing Impact can do in the reputation they, they can build or they're building, it can be a young person's type of uh, company where you can really grow. And then on, on top of that, the one thing that you could say is Impact is helping people get noticed you know obviously they'd want them to stay long longer term but they're getting people noticed because you notice now everyone who goes over there and you know gets this big buzz you know all of a sudden it ends up on you know the ease radar so yeah it, i mean it is what it is though yeah I, I i can't think of a time recently when wwe hasn't uh ruined a character that was in impact delightful Anyway, uh, yeah, so if, if they go, I, I would like to think that they'll put um, Pentagon Jr. in the Sin Cara mask and, uh, or either that or put them as uh, the New Age Conquistadors. <laughs> I completely ruined them somehow. Right, okay. Uh, Ali cut a backstage promo saying she wanted a match against Sue Young next week. And then uh, Kiara Hogan spoke up too, continuing their really awkward on stream chemistry. Uh, it's. It's funny. I, I, I just, I, I just want to see something different from 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 Ali. I, I'm just getting fed of it. She's she's the happy bunny. Then she's the super serious. And then she's happy again. And but she keeps on losing. And I, and I don't know where she's getting this self confidence from. It's beginning to frustrate me. I don't know. I, they need to do something with the Ali character because it's just not working for me anymore. I, I enjoyed the build last time, although I thought it was quite slow. But they just need to suddenly turn her in. I want to see her turn into an ass kicking machine where she's brutalizes someone. Well, I think the only way we'd get that is if you turn her heel, and you can't turn her heel because she is the top face in the knockouts division. You know, I think this feud with Su Young, I'm guessing this her calling her out is gonna come to an end soon. But I'd really like to see see Ali have Ali work a program, maybe with Kara Hogan. And I know it might sound weird at first just because, you know, Kara is a face as well. But I think that'll help her, you know, put her in a program where, you know, it's a teacher versus protege type thing. And I mean, it gives both of them something to do. Yeah, well, they, they definitely do need to do something. And, and I tell you who has surprised me is Kiara Hogan. I think she's she's, you know, developing all the time. So it's good to see that. Right. Okay, up next we had a segment where Eddie, well, just a recap of him descending into madness. You know, it's funny with what they've done with him, and I like now because I first was confused. You know, you think about at Slammiversary how his hard House of Hardcore match ended, and it had me wondering, well, where are they going with him? Because I didn't get this psycho heel like Eddie. I kind of got this, okay, you know, I got my vengeance now. I'm okay now it's like in a sense they've just turned him like he just you know has a, a nut loose in, in the in the brain and whatnot so it's it's been cool yeah I mean I've I've quite enjoyed it and we'll come on to the match at the, at the end which I thought was quite good as well but uh, you know the segment continued with Austin Aries cutting a promo about him and saying that you know he's not the man that he's, he stepped into and I think they've done a good job of building this that Aries isn't afraid of of Edwards, but he's afraid of someone who's as unhinged as Edwards is at the moment. And I quite like that storytelling. I think the one thing that Impact is doing brilliantly and certainly much better than uh, the number one company, uh, and that's storytelling. That, that they build a story very well and tell it very simply. Yes, I agree. So then we had Grado and Katarina with Joe Hendry. And I don't know, Grado. I like Grado, but he, 
he really is starting to overact. And, and, and that's, that's a, how can I say he's starting to overact when he's always overacted? But it's beginning to grate on this storyline because it's okay being a buffoon and, you know, having comedy matches and these kind of things. But in real life, you wouldn't put up with someone like that. And when Katerina and Joe Hendry are acting normally next to him, it just makes him seem like a, a huge clown. And, it? and, I, and I'm beginning, it's beginning to drain on me now, this story. I just wish they'd get on with it. Yeah, I agree on that and about them getting on with it. I mean, I, I understand what they're trying to do, but and it's going to it sucks that, you know, it's Grado who's going to be the one that doesn't benefit from it all because we all see where this is going. And you think about when he uh, got was back on our TV screens and brought Katarina with him. It gave him something, you know, and then you, you kind of, you know, with even the jabs that Don would crack on him, you know, it was always hilarious. So, yeah, I, I guess. I'm really interested more to see what Joe Hendry can do versus, you know, so versus this whole love triangle between the three. So I know next week we're getting a match, uh, I guess a rematch between him and Eli Drake. So I'm interested to see how it plays out. I One would assume that Eli would win due to Grado interference, but we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a weird one because, you know, I, I've just been talking about the storytelling being great. And, and this is a simple storyline to tell, but I don't think they're doing uh, Joe Hendry any favours with this storyline. I don't think they put him over a, as a star at this point. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's a bit of fun with his theme tune, those kind of things. But I don't know, it, it seems too slowly developed for, for Joe Hendry to feel like someone who I want to care about at this point. Someone I do care about, though, is Tessa Blanchard. And this next match was great. I really like this. And uh, it's great to see Alicia back in the ring. But, uh, oh, she took a beating on this one, didn't she? Yes. And, you know, and I guess you could argue maybe it was due to the work that Tessa did. But I thought Alicia looked really well here. And it had me wondering, like, why don't they use her more? I know we've seen her in the angle with uh, Eddie Edwards during his time when he was feuding with Callahan, but they should use her more. And like, I'll, like I said, or we said, I should say her rebel, have them compete in Okier, have them complete on, compete on explosion. I know Alicia has, um, uh, most recently, I, I forgot who she had faced, but they should have her compete more. This was fine. And Tessa, I mean, what has it been said about her? I mean, everything is just phenomenal. And, I love how she's executing this hammerlock DDT. It's just such so vicious when she does it. And I, when I was watching this time, I wanted to see how Alicia took it. And you know, you're right about everyone else seems to know how to take it except Ali. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I love how she hits that DDT. It just it looks like it really knocks them out. Mm -hmm. And of course, she she cut a promo afterwards. By the way, you are right. She took the DDT like a champ. Um, I still think that uh, Kiera's been taking it the best so far. But anyway, um, yeah, so she cut a promo after saying that she's going after Ali. So it's quite an interesting dynamic because it, it looks like there's a four-way feud going on here between um, Sue Young, Ali, Kiera, and Tessa. And it, I think what's going to happen is that you're most probably going to find that Sue Young will continue with the belt and the three of them will go off into a little feud by themselves. Uh, but I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, there. well, the one thing they actually advertised, which I thought was odd, but, you know, okay. I don't know when, but I know the next seven tapings were supposed to be getting a triple threat knockouts title match between Sue Young defending against Ali and Tessa. So I think doing things like that it would be fine. I mean, if you're including Kiera, you know, maybe go the fatal four-way route. But yeah, I could see Sue Young continuing to be champion until they have somebody to really challenge her for the title. Because right now, outside of Valley, there's really no one, unless you're going to do a Hill versus Hill between Tess and Sue Young, there's really no one for uh, Sue Young to defend the title against. Next up was uh, poor old Bobo doing the uh, the bidding of Lady Scarlet uh, Bordeaux there, uh, carrying her bags. Just a little nothing segment, but it. Yeah, from backstage interview for one week to uh, Manslave. Good, <laughs> good, good, good promotion there, Bobo. So we'll come back on to Scarlet in a, in a second, no doubt. But then we had Matt Seidel next. And I'm loving Matt Seidel. I, I think that he's not far coming uh, off as a babyface again. I think that, you know, the whole third eye thing can be turned around quite easily into a, a, a babyface bit. 
because he, he certainly got the, the high flying moves which you associate with the baby face and, and because he's smaller once again he's the underdog and have a baby face trait so I can see them turning him back soon I don't see that I, I really just wanted to see them, see them put him in the main event the title picture you know have him be one of the guys that you know maybe gets a shot down the road because I think he's ready and with his, this work with his character it brings a new element to the main event scene so I'm hoping that's something that's in the cards for the foreseeable future up next we had an advert for the Chris Jericho's rock and wrestler Rager at Sea is Chris Jericho coming to impact I don't think so you you know when I mentioned this because there was an article about it I guess he was saying before not that he was afraid, but he didn't want to burn no bridges with Vince. But now all of a sudden he doesn't care as much. I had said it. BQ kind of got on me. Um, so we can agree to disagree. Um, I'd like to see him work with the X Division. And I know uh, for some people they're like, he's not going to come over here to work with the X Division. The dude lost to Fandango at WrestleMania. So honestly, I mean, if he's able to do that, I mean, I'm sure X Division is way better than losing to Fandango at WrestleMania. But I guess where I was just going is I think because, you know, we already know what Jericho brings to the table. We know he can work at the top of the card. He can work at the lower end of the card. I just really think to have him be mix it up in the X division for a little bit, it'll help some of those guys really get over because he's a big name. And I mean, former cruiserweight champion, so he can work that style. But uh, that that was just that was just my my thing, though. If he comes in, he's coming in for one set of tapings and he's going to put someone over. So that to me means that he's going to come in either at the top of the card or maybe even against someone like Sammy Callahan or something like that. I, 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 although I would like to see him against Brian Cage, I, I just don't think there's any value in that. And they have to pay him a lot of money. And I know he's friends with Don Callis, but still, you know, he, he keeps on talking about, you know, he's it's all about the money now for him and you'll, you'll do the event if it's the right money. And if they're going to pay that kind of money, then they're not going to put him in against Brian Cage. But anyway, we'll do, I'll agree to disagree with you on that one as well. Right, GWN, as you know, fast forward time for me. So do you want to comment anything on this? Because it didn't have AJ or Samoa. <laughs> uh, two things. I think it's time to scrap this. I think leave it for Explosion. Since Explosion's just an hour, they don't need to keep putting this, let alone putting the full matches. Now, the match itself was good, but then it brought up uh, bad memories for me because you had this excellent match, and then you have Kevin Nash at the end come in and, you know, beat the hell out of Chris Saban. So, you know, Chris Saban's able to be portrayed in a high manner only to kind of get his proverbial balls cut off by Kevin Nash. So, you know, once again... Like I said, with these, and I, I seen some people comment on on uh, the impact page when they were talking about leave us your thoughts, and I left. I said everything's solid, but it might be time to do away with this, dedicate this time to a match or a segment, and just leave this exclusively for explosion. O M G, Kevin Nash. I thought he was dead, <laughs> um, as C M Punk once famously said, or I paraphrase him. Talking of which, C M Punk and Colt Cabana have had a falling out. Couldn't happen to two nicer guys. Fun fact here. Colt Cabana is the only person ever to block me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm amazed as much as you are. Not that he blocked me, that he's the only one. Anyway, uh, next up we had Kema Falabar just having a bit of a, a skip backstage. This was all about Scarlet. And then we went on to the next segment. I hated this. This is the one thing I didn't like on the show. I really didn't like this pointy hand thing with Scarlet. Um, I don't I, I didn't have too much of a problem with it. Like I said, it seems like they're just trying to give her something until they're ready for her to actually compete. So the, I guess the smoke show is going to be like any other segment segment show that we've had in the past. Like, you know, I'm thinking about facts of life that comes to mind. So um, I didn't have too much of a problem with it. You know, like I said, you know, a lot of times it's good that impact for some of these people who are arriving you know to not always have matches for them but to have some type of a segment or angle i think that helps them until they're ready to put them in some t sort of feud or matchup absolutely I, I don't have a problem with what they were trying to achieve it was just the delivery of it, it just made the board of directors look like an absolute joke um it joy it, it reminded me of and this will be a reference for some of our younger views you won't get but uh, did you used to watch seinfeld uh when george ever talked to the owner of the yankees 
and you just saw him from behind and he was like a caricature. Um, that's what it reminded me of. It, it, it just felt like you're completely making impact management out to be a joke. And, and I just didn't like it. At least, you know, in previous times, you'd have a proper management, you know, whether that was Jim Cornette or whether whoever it may be, you know, um, Bruce Pritchard as a, as, a, as, as a figure, you know, a character. You know, and I don't see why they can't do that. You know, just two, three weeks ago, we had pictures of the door outside, you know, waiting for a decision on Sammy Callahan. Uh, and, and now we've got them pointing fingers and drooling over Scarlet. I, I, I just didn't like the way it was it was presented. So never mind. Uh, well, let us know, listeners, because uh, I, as you must probably tell for, for me, you know, to me, the wrestling is just a, a byproduct of the show. <laughs> you know, it's great to see a good match, but I'm all about the presentation and the storylines and, and all, all the other things, the storytelling around it. And when you get things like this, which is completely out of kilter with some of the other things, I, I just don't like it. So, right. Matt Seidel versus Pentagon Jr. Another amazing, amazing match. Yes, I couldn't agree. You said it best, man. I mean, the chemistry, I mean, even just back to Pentagon, I want to say, you know, what they've been doing with him with these promos to that they have before his matches it's it's something like you said you know why weren't they able to do this before but they've really made him out to be a big deal and you know we know what Seidel is capable of and this to me this was pay-per-view worthy oh absolutely do you know I, I got myself thinking that uh during the match as well that this this if you saw this on a pay-per-view it would be amazing and you sometimes think well how where can they go if the matches are this good on telly um the only thing that why I thought the earlier match was better was not because of the actual wrestling, but because you weren't expecting it from, from the earlier match of Desi Hit Squad, whereas you knew these guys were going to put on a really good show. Yeah, I agree. So uh, the only thing I'd question is the booking decision. I don't think it hurts either of them to take a loss here too much, but it just feels like Seidel's lost his last three matches now. And if we are trying to move him up the card, then at some point he's going to start have to start winning again, and I just wonder where that's going to come from. Yeah, and then and then you look at it too. Is when's the last time Pentagon has lost? I mean, he's been booked really, really strong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry about that. I've uh, just uh, made some noise on my computer there as I was trying to watch back the uh, the Sammy Callahan segment that interrupted at the end. <laughs> this, this is great. I'm really enjoying what they're doing with this. It's silly, but it's it's great. Any yeah, comments on this? Yeah, um, yeah, I thought it was cool. I was, I thought it was gonna be Jake getting getting his hair cut. I was surprised it was Dave, and it teased a little bit. And maybe I'm looking too much into it. It teased a little bit of dissension because you know Jake was all on board, like, yeah, I'll do it. And Dave's like, I'm not cutting my hair, like, I'm not doing it. And then you know you see him get his his head shaved, and you know the you know a face of uh, his face showed a look of disappointment. So. That's something interesting to see down the road what happens. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, it was a bit of fun at the end. So, next, we had LAX come back out. And I, what amazes me about this is, is how great King is. Uh, and I know Conan, he's going out with his usual catchphrases. And, and he got a good crowd reaction. He got them talking along. But, but King's just amazing. But, but once again, LAX started to show some character, and especially Ortiz, which... You know, two, three months ago, I would have thought he would be the one who was showing a bit more character than Santana. But it, it was a great segment. Absolutely great segment. Yeah, I'm just happy that they were able to get more mileage out of this because I thought when we got this match at Slammiversary initially that it was just going to be a one off. But they've been able to get uh, some more out of it because I think this is going to help LAX in the long term. You know, I've always preached before that a lot of times their title reigns get stale relatively quick, but they've been able to find a, a program with, you know, the OGs, mind you, that they've really been able to get some great, I mean, I guess this would be the second time that they're facing one another, but as far as angles and uh, promos out of all this. Now, what do you do with someone like Conan? And the reason I ask this question is that he's great, you know, doing what he does. He's been a good mouthpiece. You can understand the history and those kind of things. But at some point, this feud's going to finish. Yeah. And then LAX, well, I'm going to be LAX or Conan's going to be written out. But I mean, how much more can Conan give to this stable? 
And what do you do with him if he's not part of that stable? I mean, do you think his time is limited within Impact? No, I think he'll he'll always be, be he'll always serve some sort of purpose. I'd like to believe in. I think that's the thing, and I, I know BQ always mentions about you know what they do with Diamante because I always thought that you know worst case scenario if they split up maybe they still keep the stable around and he's managing Diamante or maybe managing Ortiz but I think there will be a role for him I can't see like if they do split up that Conan just fades off into the sunset they'll find something for him I mean hell what if you add you know make a three-man booth and have him on commentary that <laughs> in itself I, I that'd be some funny stuff that that would be good actually. Uh, I'd I'd quite like to see that. I think that's a good option for him. I suppose you know it depends. Where do they need him? I mean, can you imagine Conan and Don Callis? Because it would be interesting. Put it that way. Um, all right, let's move on because uh, you know time is a ticking, uh, as uh, Killer Crossmas probably says. Jimmy Jacobs next on the sofa. Sorry, yeah, I kind of lost track there. I was trying to think, what does Killer Cross said? It's TikTok, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, Jimmy Jacobs was up next uh, on a quite splendid, splendid uh, sofa talking about Johnny Impact. And I, I just, I'd, I'd like to, you know, Jimmy Kate Jacobs is great and, and he's a brilliant talker and those kind of things. And I just want to start to see something different. I don't know. It, it's all very samey, samey with him. You know, it just I, I seen this and I kind of slightly agree with some I seen talking about maybe they need to pair Jeremy Jacobs with someone else. You know, and it's a shame because I, I was a fan of Congo Kong, but it just seems, man, I don't know if those two losses or even the, with this, like we're assuming J uh, Johnny Impact's going to go over on this whenever they face each other. But it's just like all that momentum Congo Kong had it's just he's just another guy now he became another guy relatively quick so mm -hmm. with jimmy jacobs as awesome as he is when they you know once they paired him up with congo kong it just it's not really paying dividends like we anticipated now you know we're going to move on to the main event in a second but just jumping ahead slightly obviously killer cross came out and spoiled the main event but why couldn't they've had kong do that that, that to me would have made a bit more sense because Killer Cross doesn't seem like a guy who's paid money or is trying to side with someone. He seems like just a deranged maniac. Whereas you can imagine Ares, and he's had connections with him before, hasn't he? With Congo Kong coming out to save him from memory. So you kind of feel that why wouldn't Congo Kong be with Ares instead of Killer Cross? And that would give him something to do. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. But you're right. I, I just think that Kong's mystique is gone. And that's one of the problems of having a small roster is that there's only so many people he can run through before he starts facing the same people again. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting to see if they if they ever break them apart. Well, I'm guessing if he loses again, I mean, why would you want to be managing someone who's a <laughs> a, a consistent loser? Um, I wonder what they do with him next. You know, it, it seemed like, you know, they had, he had some promise. And, like, I had always thought that he's someone you could thrust in the main event, you know, just for his sheer size and what he's able to do. But, you know, he always came up short in the big matches. And that's the one thing we always talk about wins and losses. It's not so much, you know, they can make or break someone, but sometimes you got to win some of those big matches. And I mean, because yeah. uh, otherwise it's hard for the viewer to buy in like, all right, this person's credible. So, um, yeah, we just have to wait and see. Throw him in with Sue Young. Have a love story between them. So she's no longer a bridesmaid. <laughs> bride. She marries Congo Kong. They have some demon baby. Jimmy Jacobs is uh, the minister. And Tessa Blanchard then gets involved in an intergender match with Congo Kong. There you go. I've solved all of our problems <laughs> that we've talked about tonight. Right. Okay. Uh, main event time. Do you know what? Once again, another great match. And do you know what I loved about this was the storytelling by Austin Aries in the ring. I thought it was brilliant. And, and by, to be fair to Eddie as well, I thought both of them did a great job of telling a story. Even if you knew nothing about these two guys beforehand, watching this match, you knew that Austin Aries was scared of the maniac in the ring and you knew that Eddie was as crazy. So I, I thought they did a fantastic job. Really, really enjoyed it. Didn't care for the ending, but all in all, I thought it was a great match. I liked it just because it gave Austin Aries another 
potential title contender and you know with him ha- being a former world champion that goes a long way and the way that they worked the match I mean you thought I mean I guess one mild criticism you could have or that, that I might have had was the fact that I feel like Eddie Edwards the craziness they're going with him it kind of hits a, li- a level of cartoonish to some degree but I mean it worked for this match now with the ending having and, and, and another thing too, you have Eddie Edwards strike the referee. Now we don't nor- normally you strike a referee; that's automatic disqualification. Guess that didn't matter here. But with the ending, having Killer Cross interfere and cost Eddie Edwards the match, I'm interested to see where they go with this because one would assume we're gonna get Killer Cross and his first big feud against Eddie Edwards, established talent. I think that's tremendous for him. But I wonder if. He's going to be aligning with Austin Aries. And the reason why with that is that in itself, you're going to be able to go two ways with. If he's going to be this hired muscle, and I'm thinking back to maybe uh, mid-90s when you had Shawn Michaels and Diesel. I think that's wonderful. But the thing that I don't want to happen for Killer Cross is if he's going to be aiding Austin Aries. You know, we've seen in wrestling sometimes where when a guy is feuding with someone, they'll go through the bodyguard and then... Yeah. go through the the main person and i don't want killer cross taking any losses anytime soon so if he's going to be assisting austin aries he can be that muscle but i don't want him i don't want him losing anytime soon and maybe the payoff you can do is maybe a feud between him and austin aries but yeah just back to what i was just saying i'm interested to see this pairing and where where they go with it no, I agree with you on, yeah, you, you don't want to have to be going through Killer Cross because that just basically devalues Killer Cross completely. And there's no point building up a catch like they have just to have him lose to a title contender just to get to Austin Aries. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that they've used him in this because I think he could have done so much more before getting to this stage. But, you know, just... I would prefer that he didn't pose with Austin Aries at the end. I'd rather Austin Aries have been surprised what the hell is going on. And then just for Killer Cross to, to make out, well, it just happens that Eddie Edwards is the next one on his list. So I think that would have been a better way to go. But you know, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. They've done well creatively. We, we don't know at this point. So all in all, I thought it was um, a really, really strong show. And the, the rating it got didn't deserve to get what it got. You know, we all know that there's there's other reasons, you know, Monday night football coming back or, or preseason or whatever. But, you know, it, it was a bitter blow to, to get those ratings, I'm sure, for them. And it's a shame because, you know, I thought the last two shows have been by and all excellent. Yeah, it, it's just tough, man. I mean, I, I know a lot of us and we've, we've spoken about it, you know, time and time again that, you know, with the ratings, we don't look too much into it because at the end of the day and I myself, I have a hard time watching Impact when it initially airs. So a lot of times I have to catch it on the DVR. So it airs 8 p.m. on Pacific time, my t- so my time, obviously. And so I let it uh, the DVR pick it up and I don't get to watch it till 10, 10 uh, p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time. But, you know, a lot of people aren't able to watch it when it initially airs. I mean, some people have to watch it online or watch it the next day, given the schedule. So I think just what makes it so tough and like I've told you is... It's just a discrepancy, man. I mean, you like for them to find a number that they can hover around. You hate to see just the big drops because, you know, the moment that this number announced, all oh, the naysayers, man, this was just, it was fresh meat for them. And it's yeah. no type of reflection of the product. The product product has been phenomenal. You know, it's been its best. This 2018 has really been the resuscitation of the company, you can say. But and the ratings shouldn't reflect that because people are watching it. It's just maybe they're not watching it on the uh, uh, you know the time it airs. And the one thing I wanted to add, and I want to get your take on it, Jr. Most recently had mentioned that maybe it's time for them to get off of Pop. And I've been a firm believer that their relationship with Pop, they got a good relationship with him. I understand that some people don't have that station, but switching stations, I mean, we've seen some of these stations, they're not behind wrestling. I always think about their whole time with Destination America, and that was just terrible. I, you know, I missed out on a lot of uh, good uh, uh, wrestling when they were out there, so I think it's hard to find one of these big big networks that's going to fully get behind them, fully promote them, and at least Pop has 
indicated that they're willing to do that. So I just think it's just kind of one of these things with Thursday night football about to start back up, you know, just continue to do what they do and just hope eventually where is going to get out. I would love to see them on something like Netflix. I really would uh, because they can be a bit edgier if they want to. Also, it gets them into countries if they want to get into countries where they haven't got a TV deal. You know, so it doesn't affect the Sony six in India or, or the UK or something like that. But, you know, you could effectively get into every country in the world. It's got Netflix, you know, and just bar it from those countries that got a deal elsewhere. So Netflix to me or somewhere like that, you know, like Amazon Prime would be a great home for it. Even um, YouTube Red, you know, uh, maybe not YouTube Red, but because uh, I, I don't know how big that viewership is. But, you know, somewhere like that, a streaming service, I think, would be a natural home, especially because people view things differently, as you say. And if you got a streaming service, you get a true reflection of what the viewership is as well, because, you know, they'll count whenever you watch it as opposed to first runs. So, yeah, that's my favorite option. Uh, but to me, it, you know, makes very little difference. I suppose the people that makes them to the bean counters at Anthem, you know, who just need to know what they're getting and and. Pop and Anthem, I'm sure, most probably having some very tough discussions at the moment. Anyway, next week's show, what we got? Yes, we got LAX and the OGs taking things to the streets. <laughs> and then also okay. we're getting uh, Phoenix versus Sammy Callahan, Jimmy Jacobs versus Johnny Impact. We're getting Ali versus Sue Young, Joe Henry versus Eli Drake, and the debut of Scarlet Bordeaux, Bordeaux's, sorry, Smoke Show. Pretty stacked show. Looking forward to it already. Right, unless there's anything else, Ro, just for our listeners again, make sure to leave us comments. Thumbs up, thumbs down, doesn't matter. Any thumbs, a good thumb. That sounds a bit weird. Uh, just make sure you do comment and uh, give us a like or a dislike. We don't mind. Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling-related content. This is the Impact Lounge.